Welcome. It is good to be gathered together on this good Friday. All this holy week, we've been gathering around the theme, all for love's sake. That every moment of Jesus' life flows from his love for you. It is all, especially the giving of his life, it is all for love's sake. So pray God's blessing upon our worship this Good Friday. A few things. Today is a, a service of tenebrae. That just simply means we go from light to dark. And as we read uh, the passion, the, the greater love of Christ's passion, uh, we'll continue to get darker. The candles will be extinguished and the sanctuary will get darker and darker. And as we live in this greater love of Christ's passion, as you hear from the Gospel of John, the passion of Jesus, you'll have opportunity in the service to give those script parts of the Scripture voice. And so um, it's not just kind of sit and listen. Uh, you'll have a voice. There'll be times when you'll see we'll all collectively give voice. There'll be a time when the men raise their voices in response, and then there'll also be a time for when the women give voice. And so just be mindful of that participation. And then, of course, through all of our time, uh, not only will we be hearing about a greater love, <laughs> we'll be singing about it. And so please uh, sing uh, in the love that we have for our Lord as we reflect upon his love for us all. In our worship today, we have the director of our student ministries, Gus Aganyaga. He'll be, he'll be uh, helping us in, in worship today as, as well as Pastor Mike and myself. So with that said, may God bless our worship. Before we stand, I just thought we would have a moment of reflection with this video uh, called Greater Love. There exists a love far greater than we will ever understand. A love prophesied for ages. Then to disrupt the rain of dark. Challenge the skeptics. A love that quenches our thirst. Seeks after the sick. And mends the broken. A love that came to our rescue. Despite our betrayal and our denial, we bore the weight of our sin. Facing death by being nailed to a cross. And while darkness appeared victorious, This love emerged from the grave. Please rise.
God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we're still sinners, Christ died for us. now our confession have mercy on us O God according to your unfailing love blot out our transgressions wash away our iniquities and cleanse us from our sin hide your face from our sins and blot out our iniquity we come in silence before the one who suffered and died for us and seek forgiveness It is hard for us to comprehend Christ's great love for us. Yet the meaning of the cross is clear. Your sins are forgiven and completely paid for, not with silver or gold, but with the precious blood of the crucified Christ. Through his cleansing blood, you are reconciled with God. By his wounds, you are healed. Through his death, you are granted eternal life. Receive this deep, forgiving love. Here is your saving. You are forgiven. Thank Thank you, you, Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Amen. This 
This is the gift of God. You may be seated. All for love's sake. Greater love. Greater love has no one than this, than one would lay down his life for his friends. Or, as the God's Word translation puts it, the greatest love you can have for your friends is to give your life for them. Yesterday on Monday, Thursday, we live in the celebration of the Lord's Supper. This gift that is given for us, for the forgiveness of our sins and the strengthening of our faith. It is a moment that we live with gratefulness and thankfulness in our hearts. But then, before we leave on Monday, Thursday, the service kind of takes a turn. And everything that we love that's on the altar, the body and blood of Jesus, the bread and the wine, God's word that's kept for us, all of the paraments, you know, the kind of, the fancy kind of cloth that gives this space, this beauty, embroidered. It's it's beautiful. It is all on Monday, Thursday, stripped away. Everything is taken off the altar so that it is left completely bare. Now we do that as a symbol. It's to get in our mind the image of what actually is happening Today, Good Friday, that Jesus will be stripped of everything. Jesus is reduced to nothing, and yet he has so much to give. Stripped of everything. The greater love of Jesus has so much to give to his Father. Jesus' greater love would give obedience. In the Garden of Gethsemane, racked with the weight of the reality of this cup of suffering that he was to face on the cross, Jesus prays to his Father, Father, not your will, not my will, but your will be done. And so he obeys to the very end, giving of his life, pouring it out for you. Every moment, of Jesus' life lived in obedience to God's law is his greater love for you. In obedience to God in all things, God gives in Jesus, in his greater love for you, all of that perfect obedience in rightness as goodness is credited to you. That's what he gives. To the disciples. Jesus, in his greater love, gives freedom. You see, when they came to arrest Jesus, they just didn't come to get Jesus. They wanted to arrest every one of those with Jesus, every one of his disciples. And Jesus pleads for their freedom. Jesus would say, 
and his love for you. If the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. The greater love of Jesus declares and gives to you that you are no longer a slave to sin. By his blood, you are free. And to the one who would look at Jesus and see him as an enemy, The ones who would come to arrest Jesus, right? Remember, Peter takes out his sword and he swings and he cuts off the ear of the guard, the one who was a declared enemy of Jesus. In Jesus' greater love, he heals even this one who would see Jesus as an enemy. And God's greater love for you, when you and I were at enmity with God because of all the wounds that we carry in our offense and sin to God, to others, and however you have been wounded, hurt, by others swinging at you. The prophet Isaiah would speak of this greater love that would be given through a suffering servant, Jesus. That the weight of all of the wounds, all of the sin would be placed upon Jesus. And then these words, and by His wounds, you are healed. So great is his love for you. And to the executioners and those who accuse Jesus, the greater love of Jesus just keeps giving and giving. And so to his executioners, Jesus from the cross gives forgiveness. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do, Jesus declares. Listen, I know for you and for me, there are things that we know. We might not have spoken a word to anybody else, but down in here we know what sins and offenses that churn there. But so great is God's love for you that even the sins that you don't know, that are unknown to you, he even forgives those. And to a thief, to a thief beside him, rightly being crucified, he would admit The greater love of Jesus gives paradise. The thief would say to Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus says, today you will be with me in paradise. And so great is God's love for you. That he would love you this way. That he would give his son. So that as you believe and trust in him, you will not perish. You will be remembered and in his love, you have everlasting life. And to his mother, Jesus gives a son. Behold, your mother, Jesus would say to John, his disciple. And to his mother, he would say, behold, your son. And in God's greater love for you in Christ, 
you have been adopted into his family. And Jesus, through him, you are a child of the heavenly father. And there is for you an inheritance kept in heaven for you that will not perish, spoil, or fade. It's yours. Though stripped of everything on this Friday, Jesus still has so much to give, and give he does to you even still today. So what of you? I know that there's a time in life, I think it's in all of us, where we may have even uttered these words. We're tapped out. We say, I got nothing left to give. Well, today's your day. Nothing in my hands I bring. Simply to the cross I cling. And when that is yours, you have it all. You will never have a greater love. It's yours in Jesus, who on this day gives you his all, all for love's sake. In Jesus' name. Now we're going to live in this greater love of Christ's passion. And I love this quote from a song by David Wilcox called Show the Way. And it just kind of speaks towards the reality of what today is in Tenebrae, where there will be darkness. The, the quote is this, in this scene set in the shadows, the, like the night is here to stay, there is evil cast around us. But love wrote this play, the passion of Jesus for you. When he had finished praying, Jesus left with his disciples and crossed the Kidron Valley. On the other side, there was an olive grove, and he and his disciples went into it. Now Judas, who betrayed him, knew the place, because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas came to the grove, guiding a detachment of soldiers and some officials from the chief priests and Pharisees, They were carrying torches, lanterns, and weapons. Jesus, knowing all that was going to happen to him, went out and asked them, Who is it you want? Jesus Jesus of of Nazareth, Nazareth, they they replied. I am he, Jesus said. And Judas, the traitor, was standing there with them. When Jesus said, I am he, they drew back and (laughs) fell to the ground. Again, he asked them, Who is it you want? And they they said, Jesus Jesus of Nazareth. I told you that I am he. If you are looking for me, then let these men go. This happened so that the words he had spoken would be fulfilled. I have not lost one of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant cutting off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Jesus commanded Peter, Put your sword away. Shall I not drink the cup the Father has given me?
then the detachment of soldiers with its commander, and the Jewish officials arrested Jesus. They bound him and brought him first to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it would be good if one man died for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple were following Jesus. Because this disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the high priest's courtyard. But Peter had to wait outside at the door. The other disciple who was known to the high priest came back, spoke to the girl on duty there, and brought Peter in. You are not. He replied, replied, I am not. not. It was cold, and the servants and officials stood around the fire they had made to keep warm. Peter also was standing with them, warming himself. Meanwhile, the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. I have spoken openly to the world, Jesus replied. I always taught in the synagogues or at the temple where all the Jews come together. I said nothing in secret. Why question me? Ask those who heard me. Surely they know what I said. When Jesus said this, one of the officials nearby struck him in the face. Is Is this this the the way way you answer the high high priest, he demanded? If I said something wrong, Jesus replied, testify as to what is wrong. But if I spoke the truth, why did you strike me? Then Annas sent him, still bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. As Simon Peter stood warming himself, he was asked, He he denied denied it, saying, I I am not. not. One of the high priest's servants a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, challenged him. Didn't I see you with him in the olive grove? Again, Peter denied it, and at that moment, a rooster began to crow. Then the Jews led Jesus from Caiaphas to the palace of the Roman governor. By now it was early morning. 
and to avoid ceremonial uncleanness. The Jews did not enter the palace. They wanted to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and asked, What charges are you bringing against this man? If he were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. But, but we, we have, have no right to, to execute anyone, anyone the, the Jews objected. This happened so that the words Jesus had spoken, indicating the kind of death he was going to die, would be fulfilled. Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea, Jesus asked? Or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew? Pilate replied. It was your people and your chief priests who handed you over to me. What is it that you have done? Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jews. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, You are right in saying I am a king. In fact, for this reason I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of the truth listens to me. What is truth? Pilate asked. With this, he went out again to the Jews and said, I find no basis for a charge against him, but it is your custom for me to release to you one prisoner at the time of the Passover. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews? They shouted back, No, no not him. Give, give us Barabbas. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe and went up to him again and again, saying, Hail, Hail King, King of, of the, the Jews. Jews. And, and they, they struck, struck him in the, in the face. face. Once more, Pilate came out and said to the Jews, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no basis for a charge against him. When Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, Here is the man. As soon as the chief priests and their officials saw him, they shouted, 
Crucify! Crucify! But Pilate answered, You take him and crucify him. As for me, I find no basis for a charge against him. The Jews insisted, We have a law, and according to that law, he must die, because he claimed to be the Son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was even more afraid, and he went back inside the palace. Where do you come from? He asked Jesus, but Jesus gave him no answer. Do you refuse to speak to me? Don't you realize that I have power either to free you or to crucify you? And Jesus answered, You have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to set Jesus free, but the Jews kept shouting, If If you you let let this this man go, you you are are no no friend of Caesar. Caesar. Anyone Anyone who claims to be a king opposes Caesar. Caesar. When Pilate heard this, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judge's seat at a place known as the Stone Pavement, which in Aramaic is Gabbatha. It was the day of preparation of Passover week, about the sixth hour. Here is your king, Pilate said to the Jews. But But they they shouted, shouted, take him him away, away. take him away, crucify Crucify him. him. Shall I crucify your king, Pilate asked. We We have have no king king but Caesar, Caesar, the the chief chief priests priests answered. Finally, Pilate handed him over to be crucified. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus, carrying his own cross. He went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. Here they crucified him, and with him two others, one on each side, and Jesus in the middle. Pilate had a note prepared and fastened it to the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth. The king of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this sign, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and the sign was written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. The chief priest of the Jews protested to Pilate, 
Do not write the king of the Jews, but that this man claimed to be king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, dividing them into four shares, one for each of them. With the undergarment remaining, this garment was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. Let's, Let's not, not tear, tear it. it. Let's, Let's decide, decide by lot, lot who will get, get it. it. This happened that the scripture might be fulfilled, which said, They, they divided, divided my garments, garments among them, them and, and cast, cast lots for my clothing. clothing. So this is what the soldiers did. cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Dear woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. Later, knowing that all was now completed, and so that the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there. So they spoke, soaked a sponge in it and put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Oh, 
the day of preparation and the next day was to be a special Sabbath because the Jews did not want the bodies left on the crosses during the Sabbath they asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken down the soldiers therefore came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with Jesus and then those of the other but when they came to Jesus and found that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. The man who saw it has given testimony, and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth. And he testifies so that you also may believe these things happen so that the scripture would be fulfilled. Not, Not one, one of his, his bones will, will be broken. And as another scripture says, they look, they look on the one they have pierced. Please rise. We pray. Dearest Jesus, we are drawn to your cross. We needed to see the heartbreaking beauty of what you did for us. We need to understand this truth, which alone sets us free. We come to you, as always, so full of need. But Jesus, it is you, yourself more than another gift or provision that we need. On the cross, you gave us your all. We are humbled by the depth of your love. Thank you for your life given as my Savior, my Lord, and all God's people say, Amen.